Hello and welcome back to Unbounded Operators, a video course where you can find a lot of videos about functional analysis. In particular, at the moment we talk a lot about so-called closed operators on Banach spaces. And in today's part 7 we will see how we can characterize them with the so-called graph norm. However, you already know, before we do that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or on Patreon. And please don't forget, as a generous supporter, you get a lot of additional material with the link in the description. Okay, then let's immediately start with the topic of today, which is about operators between Banach spaces. Moreover, you should already know, an operator is just a linear map with a given linear subspace as a domain. And now we have learned in the last video with the closed graph theorem that the case that the domain is the whole space is not the interesting one. This is because most of the time we will be interested in closed unbounded operators. However, for Banach spaces these two things don't fit together. Namely, closed and bounded mean exactly the same thing in this case. For this reason, most of the time the operators we consider are not defined on the whole Banach space. Of course, this still could happen, but these are not the important examples. And you might remember that we already considered an example of a functional defined on a Banach space. This means the space on the right hand side is given by the complex numbers or the real numbers. Indeed, the explicit example we gave in part 5 can be generalized to any Banach space X. The only thing we need is that X is infinite dimensional such that we can define such an unbounded functional. Moreover, we can use the same proof as in part 5 to show that every unbounded functional is not closable. However, we can also see that in another way because we can always extend the definition of a functional. We can do that in a way such that the domain is then the whole space X. More precisely, this is done by extending a given basis of a subspace to a basis of the space X. This means this requires the axiom of choice. However, I don't want to do the details here. The important thing is that you can see from this extension combined with the closed graph theorem, you can conclude that this operator is also not closed. So this is the important takeaway and you should remember it. Unbounded functionals on Banach spaces are never closed. Therefore, it's always helpful to have in mind that this closeness property for unbounded operators is a substitution for the boundedness. So we don't have it for functionals, but we have it for a lot of other operators as we will see in future. Therefore, it's very important to have a good understanding of this closeness property. And now it turns out that in Banach spaces we can characterize that with an additional property. So we can use the completeness of the Banach spaces to describe closed operators in another way. Therefore, sometimes you might see this property for the definition of a closed operator. Namely, we have that T is a closed operator if and only if the domain DT is a complete space. However, not complete with respect to the original norm in X, but complete to the so-called graph norm. This one is usually denoted here with an index T and it simply has the graph of T in mind. Okay, and now we see, if this is a Banner space, we also have that T is a closed operator. So this can be very useful, but you have to know what the graph norm with respect to T actually means. And indeed, this is not so complicated, you can just put in any point x from the domain. And then you just use the original norm of x and also add the norm of the image. So this is tx in the norm of y. Okay, so you see, this is a well-defined norm and it's called the graph norm because it uses the graph of t to define the value of the norm for x. And indeed, this is already the crucial thing we need for the proof now. In other words, we want to define a linear map from this space into the graph. And maybe let's simply call this map J. And now I've already said it, we map this space into the graph of T. 
And there you might remember, this one we have denoted by g with index t. And the norm there should be just the induced norm from the Cartesian product. So the norm of x times y, which is just the sum of both old norms. And now we just send a point x to the graph of t. So what comes out here is simply a pair where the first component is x and the second component is tx. So obviously this is a linear map, but also bijective. So this is not hard to see, we can invert the map easily. However, since we work in normed spaces here, the question would be what is about the norm? So how large is the norm in the image compared to the norm in the domain? So there we just need to know that the norm in the Cartesian product is just the two norms added. So we have the norm of the first argument plus the norm of the second argument in this pair. And then we immediately see this is exactly the graph norm of the point x. Indeed, this also explains the name. This is why we call it the graph norm from the beginning. Moreover, now this implies that the map j does not change the norm at all. It goes from one space into the other, but it will not change the length. And this is exactly what we call an isometric isomorphism. If you want to know more about that, there is a whole video about that in the functional analysis series part 21. Okay, and now the important conclusion here is that the map J translates every information from the left hand side here to the right hand side and J inverse does it the other way around. Roughly speaking, you could just say the normed spaces left and right are exactly the same. They have exactly the same information and for example, we have a one to one correspondence between Cauchy sequences. Therefore, if the one space is complete, the other one is also complete. Hence, we can write d of t complete if and only if g t complete. However, this is definitely a subspace in the Banner space x times y and therefore completeness is equivalent to closeness. And now you might remember this closeness of the graph in x times y was exactly what we used for the definition of a closed operator. So in summary, we get a whole chain of equivalences here that show that the completeness of this space is equivalent to the closeness of the operator. And with that we have it, now you have different possibilities to show that an operator is closed. And in the next video, we will start a new topic. We will talk about so-called adjoints of operators. So I really hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.